What are the top five deal breakers in a relationship? Deal breakers. Top five. Top Coach Jack. What are the top five things that a woman can do that will that was in the relationship for you? I mean, that's I mean, you just the segue was wonderful, man. Respect. Yeah, it was. Respect. Lack of respect. Lack when of the respect, respect gone, gone, it's over. Right. Did she call you out your name? That's like, that's disrespectful. No, everybody not may not think that's disrespectful. Well they do like you. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like, like like he said, it's not a one pick, like one, it's not a one thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They love me. Mm-hmm. Right. Some yeah. some some some, some people it. are toxic though. Some yeah. people truly yeah, are they toxic. They like that. That's, yeah, that's why I say it's not a one size fit all. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's whatever I, I your relationship mm-hmm. outside of that. Yeah, I feel like we've been Kojak though. Right. Deal breakers in a relationship. What you got? Uh, definitely disrespect. Damn. That's that's number one. Uh-huh. Infidelity is a deal breaker. Infidelity is a deal breaker. Being in secret competition or envy definitely is a oh. deal breaker. Mm. And, and they do that. People they do, do that. Right? Like you know, we yo, man, they got to be y'all got to be teammates. You know, y'all got to work together. We yeah. don't work against each other. But everybody don't everybody don't see that. Okay. Yeah, your makeup prettier than his. Yeah, exactly. As, as he take longer than you do, or he got a problem with you doing something, or or the money, more money you make. You know, it has to be. That can be a deal breaker. I'm trying to think what else would be a deal breaker. I think though you you do that. I mean that, that's it. And being too not wandery eye because you can be friendly and just I guess being unmotivated. It don't have hope. Any a man with no hope is just or not visionary. Or you don't. That's just it, that's a deal breaker for me. You got to have some kind of hope and some kind of motivation. You know. Okay, you just gonna be extra yeah, fine. I was, I was, you just gonna I, be extra I, fine. Tiptoe hey, hey, up hey, here like hey, hey, walk on, she walk right on up in here. Nothing going on. Damn. 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 Stay Senator the London Lamar walked in this <laughs> thing like right. bam, 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 bam. Baby, where? Baby, where? I don't even want to ask her what the top five deal breakers are because folks gonna be crying <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, five deal breakers. Stay Senator London Lamar in the building, y'all. Turn up, turn up. Yeah. Yeah. State no. Senator London Lamar is in the building, and 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 I gotta ask you, top five deal breakers in a relationship. What's the what's the top five things somebody can do to break the deal? Being a liar, uh, disloyal. Mm. Um, Let me find out you had these questions before you walked in here. Don't keep your word. Uh, under five ten. Oh. And you disqualify the whole population of folks. Well, I, I am five ten, so right. well, and, t- and I'm like hills. six three in my yeah, heels. So I just don't want to have to go through the innocent attack. But um, <laughs> not supporting my ambitions, and my oh, dreams. Okay, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay. We about we about lined up. We, we about, about lined, lined up. up. Yep. We use yep. different words, but yep, not yep. We're lined up. Man, man, Stay Center London Lamar just dropped in the building, y'all. <laughs> y'all, yes, look, sir. we are excited to have her. And look, we've been want, waiting on this interview for a long time. Let's go. I mean, you know, time. like, we spo- you told me we about to talk yeah, today, so oh, okay. I'm ready I'm to ready. talk. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. And we got you on, we, that's Mountain Dew. Oh, okay. right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love we're gonna, it. We're going to make sure we take care of you. Yeah. State, State Senator London Lamar, you, you are the youngest senator. Amazing. In the Tennessee legislature. Scratch it up two times yeah, for you a Coach J. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You heard that scratch. I heard it. Yeah, right. Later. And, and so let, let's talk about that. Let, 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 you know, was that always the ambition? So I want to like give shout. I'm the youngest woman, the youngest African American to ever serve in Tennessee Senate history. Wow! I mean, um, recently just found out I'm the first sitting senator to give birth. Um, so I am very proud of all of those accolades, not because I have them per se, but because of the honor of breaking glass ceilings for all those that's going to behind coming behind me and giving. Young folks, an example of that, you're never too young to be in a position to make change and influence your community, if that's what your calling is. I knew I wanted to do something around leadership, and I liked the idea of politics, even when I was a little girl, because in high school, I was the one to like 
student government and stuff like that, okay. class He's president. So I was already kind of like mm-hmm. interested in this type of work. I never dreamed of until I got here that I would be able to do it so young. So it is an honor mm-hmm. and a blessing and a great responsibility that I take seriously to be in this world. And I'm only 33 and I've been in the legislature six years. So I got elected at 27 and came in at 28, 28, one of one of the two. Um, and um, it was definitely a learning curve. You know, uh, I'm not too um, cocky to say that I didn't know everything. You know, I'm in my 20s still. So I'm not only in a position of power, but I'm growing in life at the same time and doing all those things while being in the public eye and being held to a higher standard. Mm-hmm. Um, and so throughout my time, not only have I grown as a person, um, but I've also grown as a legislator and truly have uh, really found my footing and how I want to make my impact on the state of Tennessee, um, but also my p- impact on society. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. I'm, I think now, not only am I at a place where I want to get good policy, that's why we all run for office, mm-hmm. but I also am using my role to give other young people opportunity to come up. See, one of the biggest things that I've always regretted is that I don't really have an older mentor mm-hmm. who I can actually identify, especially a woman. I think that that's too. important to it the point. Is. I think a woman should definitely have stepped up and officiated herself who's been in this game for a while as a mentor, she saw me rising into this role. And I don't have that. And I've been treated as this form of competition. And maybe to some I am, because I am London Lamar. But at the same time, they're like... We got to also be okay with understanding the fact that there has to be a generational change in leadership. Mm -hmm. And so why don't I take on the one who is opening doors and is out here trying to do it in a real genuine way? Mm -hmm. So instead of like just being upset about that, I decided that now I'm in this role. I'm going to do that for the ones behind me. So when I look at my staff... Yeah. 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 My staff young, you know, when I, 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 I fire staff too. They fire. People. They fire. Yeah. And, and they send hungry. Shout out. Send them a shout out. I want to shout out to all my staff I've had throughout the year. Lee Smith, who's graduating from Loyola Law School in two months. Mm-hmm. I'm going up there for his graduation. My girl Mackenzie Mosby, who's now the director of policy for Ed Trust. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to shout out to my campaign manager, now my director of policy, Caitlin Thompson. Caitlin and I, holding down. Caitlin, baby, Caitlin up? be holding it down. Right. And then I just hired a new young person. Um, his name is Shamar Nash from yeah, Memphis. Yeah, He's yeah. now my new executive assistant. And then, of course, I have Brandon Putbreeze, who's been there, has so much institutional knowledge right. um, as my communications director. So, well, you got you got to tell people what your what your title is because you you you're naming off all the staff. Tell them what your title is. So, I'm chairwoman of the Senate Democratic Caucus, which means I run the political arm of the Senate Democratic Caucus uh, or the Minority Caucus. of people see you have Democrat and Republican in legislature. Mm-hmm. The Republicans are considered the majority, and the Democrats are the minority because we are smaller in numbers. So, I'm one of one or two leaders. Uh, in the Senate who's serving that role. Um, This is the first time in the Senate that two black women are in the top two leadership roles. Big shout out to Senator Ramesh Ackberry, (laughs) uh, minority leader. Yes, the first African-American female minority leader um, in the Senate Minority Caucus. So I'm I'm just thankful to be able to serve with her um, and uh, be able to lead with her. And she's a little bit older than me, but she's still young. So not only can she align with me on a lot of young people issues, but she can also serve as somewhat of person who wants to help me as well because she has more institutional knowledge by being there longer. So, you know, I'm also, you know, proud that of my growth in I feel like I've been jaded by black women, but also have come to love the black women that I work with. Um, to try the black women that I work with to see them as my sisters and my allies versus my competition. Yes. Um, yeah. So, you know, I really love the black women that I serve with, Senator Ackberry and Senator Oliver. We all represent Memphis and Nashville, and we're all the three top leaders. Awesome. And I think, I hope that we're setting an example of how black women can collectively work together while also being different. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the standard that I think that we have to put forth in the Senate in the upper chamber of really setting the standard of what it's like to be a formidable legislator, but also what it's like to be yourself and be able to get things done. And um, that's also my brand. 
Man, that's what's up. Like, hey, that's my brand. Hey, look, hey, look, we're coming right back mm. to State Senator London Lamar. We're going to talk about being jaded by other black women. Well, don't we're don't also going to talk about girl. her humble starts. Yes. And we got a whole lot more to talk about with State Senator London Lamar. We'll be right back to watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. They watching me and you together, pull the bill forever. Plus, we would live together, pop out magic, go to sweater. They want they can tell her, know when they see us, they tell it. I took you through some but you still got me through whatever. Hey man, this is Marcus with Unapologetically Memphis. We tuned in to the Antonio Parkinson Project. Big Memphis. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Welcome back to the Antonio Parkinson Project. I am Antonio Parkinson, and I'm here with my wonderful co-host, Angelica Jelly Woods, in the building. Yeah, hey, y'all. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, Look, yeah. Marshall came in here and turned up, so I'm, I'm excited about this. Okay, what? my whole vibe done changed. Man. <laughs> DJ Kojak in the building. Scratch it up for him four times, DJ Kojak. Bam. 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 Yeah, London like Lamar, that. state senator. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. state senator London Lamar, we, 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 we left off with... Uh, you know, you feel a little jaded from black women sometimes. Well, oh, first Jesus. of all, first of all, first of all, you probably been jaded by black women for a long time, way before you became the state senator, mm -hmm. right? And 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 and, and we're going to come to that, but I want I do want to go back to this. First time I saw London Lamar, she was not the senator at the time. She was oh. working for Stand for Children at the time, and I was invited to a presentation. She was giving the presentation, mm -hmm. so I'm sitting back in the cut, just laying back quietly, right, just chilling, watching. And then I see London come in and start her presentation. And I'm looking like, Kojak, you know, we've been in the music business for a long time. For a long time. We know star material when we see it, right? Yes, yes. I'm looking at this woman, young. How mm. old were you back then? 24. Were you even 24? Okay, 24 years old. Mm. I'm looking at this woman like, this is a doggone superstar. <laughs> Real talk, seriously. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you know it when you see it, especially mm -hmm. if you've been in, in the business that we've been in, right? right? Marketability. You know, beauty, intelligence, presence. right? Presence, mm -hmm. presence, right? Key. Ambition, drive, go mm -hmm. get it, hustle, mm -hmm. right? And I'm looking like, I'm serious, because you don't see it all the time where one person has everything that it that it yeah. takes yeah. to be a superstar, yeah. right? Real talk, mm -hmm. seriously. And when I saw her that first time, I said, oh, shit. She created what I call that oh, shit moment, right? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Who is this? Right. <laughs> and, and, and that's where that's where we met. And, and, and I've been telling her. And, and I let her tell it, but you're special. Yeah. You can't squander this away because mm -hmm. you are special. Real talk. Yeah. You remember them conversations? Yes. Yeah, seriously. And so and so and it's showing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in in everything that she's doing and 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 everything that she's working on. And I always tell her to this, you know, your story is being written. Yeah. So all of the bumps and the bruises and you know and the things that you deal with it's it's you you take it take it with you know take it with a grain of, as a, with a grain of salt because your story is being written mm -hmm. and it ain't even remotely it ain't even close to being finished yet. Yeah. right right yes so so let's talk about women being you being jaded you weren't jaded well, first for the first of all, time thank you for that i really yeah. need to hear that in that moment so mm -hmm. uh, i do want to give a shout out for you for being like one of my ride or dies from the beginning like he has stuck by me th thin and thick and thin, like been there for me, bedside to the to the high heels of the legislature. And I just want to say thank you for oh, being a good friend you. to me. That's I love you, Parkinson. Yeah, um, but I just want to love you too. All right, now yeah, off that emotional stuff, let's get back to it. Let's get to the. I was feeling gooey for a second. Uh -uh. I know it's okay though. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> Look at Michelle. Michelle, little eyes welling up over there. Look. <laughs> yeah, but 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 let's talk about that. You yeah. know, so, tell us about. Tell us about your upbringing. Tell us about, and, and shout out to Emily Lamar. Let's see it. Yeah. Well, I know she's probably watching. I'm sure she's watching. Yes. But, but, if y'all uh, playing with the baby right now. Right. Incredible Aww. support. Your mom and your grandmom. So let's, tell us about the beginning. What, what, what shaped London Lamar? So... I was raised by strong women. My mm. mother and my grandmother. Um, they are just the epitome of 
love and just really investing in your children's gift. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was talking with some educators the other day and they said, how did you become who you are? I said, my mama didn't stifle who I was. Mm. She just built on the daughter she saw that was evolving. That's she so, saw so how God wired you. That's how God wired me. Mm-hmm. I believe I don't believe I'm here by accident. I believe God put me here for a reason. Mm-hmm. This is his mission. Ooh, he set out for me. Purpose. For real, that's purpose and everything. Right. And God will reveal your purpose. But so he 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 my mom and my grandmother just kind of like helped create what was manifesting. It was so interesting. My grandma and her friends, they used to have this social club. So they used to plan trips and things all the time. So I was nosy and wanted to be involved. So I used to stand around the table, seeing them playing things, working with the other women in their social club, like getting together, having activities, planning mm-hmm. out of town trips. And I'll be right there with my grandma playing all of those things. Mm-hmm. While my mama kept me engaged in activities, church, community services. Mm-hmm. That manifested to London becoming who I was. Mm-hmm. So when I got to middle and high school, they didn't have to make me get involved in student council and all of these different clubs. I wanted to mm-hmm. because I watched my mom and grandmother stay engaged, even though we didn't have much. We were a working class family. Um, my mom worked at FedEx. My grandmother was a nurse um, and my dad lived out of town. And so um, they did. They gave their last dime to be able to give me these opportunities. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. And so I was engaged and I was involved and I know I wanted to do politics. Let me tell you what's so funny. After school, I used to do my homework my, sitting there with my mama. She used to watch Oprah at four o'clock every day and Action News 5 at 5. Right. Behind, <laughs> back to back. So I was uh, watching hey, Oprah. Channel 5 going to love that. Right. <laughs> right, right. So I'm like, right. you know, right. watching mm-hmm. Oprah. Oprah talking about real stuff going on in the world. I'm yeah. So I, I'm taking it in. I uh-huh. realize that I'm taking it in. So I'm t- in high school like, Running, talking about real issues and stuff. And then my senior year of high school, Barack Obama became president of the United States. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I was yeah. applying to college at that time as an engineering major because I was good at math. And I was like, a black woman is still make a lot of money. I wanted to, you know, set myself up real good. Mm-hmm. But it was something about seeing him on that stage that night with his black wife and his black children that just changed my whole world. Yeah. And I called the colleges I was going to. I said, I don't want to do engineering no more. I want to come as a political science major. Mm. And I did. And I never turned back. And so while at St. Mary's College, Notre Dame, Indiana, I major. Wait, 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 wait. St. Mary's. Tell us what St. Mary's St. Mary's like. College <laughs> is located in Notre Dame. We're the right. sister schools to University of Notre Dame, okay. um, part of the Congressional of the Holy Cross. It was right. an all-women's liberal arts college. Mm-hmm. Um, HBCU? No, it's not an HBCU. <laughs> it's high, well, it was a strong PWI. Yeah. My yeah. school was actually like 2% African American. 2%. Like, it was out of so, like... So basically, it wasn't two of, but two of y'all. It was right, only right. a few. And right, that's right, including right, the right. mixed girls, too. Yeah. Right. So, like, when I say all white, it was all white. But it was cool. Like, I met great all friends. White Listen, white people right. be the best fun. We don't be on They taught me They're everything. Thank right. you. They gonna have a good time. We had a good time. I had Thank a good time you. at right. my uh, right. small. Right. <laughs> like, Notre Dame football games on the weekends, tailgame with them. Right. It was an experience. It's a different right. type of tailgame. It's a different type Thank of tailgame. Thank you. See? Okay. Part Judgment free ADD. tailgame. Right. Okay. Judgment <laughs> 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 free. <laughs> and Angelica became black during Black History Month. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 black girl from Iowa. Here is about food and barbecue. No, that right. was white people in tailgating. Right, Two, three in the morning. They yeah, yeah, up. yeah. They diving into little bitty pools and everything. Yeah. Right, in, in, the, in the frozen weather. Right. Mm. Yeah, it was a yeah. fun time. Um, but while I was there, I stayed engaged and got involved in all this other stuff. And then Barack Obama was running for re-election. I started a young Democrats club on campus in my college. Um, and I got all of these girls who I thought were conservative because we had a Catholic, rich, liberal arts mm-hmm. university. Next thing I had my first meeting, sis. It was like 60 girls in the room. Mm. And they were like, oh, we didn't know it was Democrats on campus. We're liberal. <laughs> we're like, and I was right. like, oh, my gosh. So we did all of these activities. Mm. I registered people on campus to vote. We went to go see Barack Obama. He came to Ohio. Mm. Um, we just did all of these great things. Um, and then I also had the opportunity to live in Washington, D.C. for a semester and do the Washington Semester Program, where mm. I interned and worked on Capitol Hill for our Congressman Steve Cohen, while also going to school at American okay. University. Okay. And I was able to like go to these think tanks. I went to a Supreme Court hearing. I did all of these things on both Democrat and Republican to see how politics work. It from that experience for me and that activism on campus for me ignited a strategy of how do I get to office 
on a long term trajectory. Mm-hmm. And so I thought when I was graduating, I was going to be able to come back to D.C., but I was coming from a single parent household. I didn't have no job. I couldn't afford rent in D.C., so I was forced to come home to Memphis mm-hmm. and, and make it work. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting from ground zero. Yeah, come, by design, though. You yeah. might by not design. Realize, you might not realize right. it at the time. Right. Right. By design. If you, if you had the money, you wouldn't be yep. in your purpose. Absolutely, because right. I thought this door mm-hmm. D.C. was closed. My right. feelings hurt, but it's really God's like, go through this door. Yeah. I got some plan for mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So I started from scratch in Memphis. Um, I started working at this small political consulting firm, learning how to run campaigns on a very, very grassroots level. Um, I didn't have a job, wasn't making but like a thousand dollars a month. It was real low budget. Um, But there so small, it was on me to help design the literature, the designs, mm-hmm. the grassroots and the field plans for mm-hmm. these candidates. Mm-hmm. So I was learning. I was volunteering. I was doing everything. I was literally making people's push cards on Microsoft Word. Damn. Like, I yeah, learned, taught our, myself graphics. Yeah. Arcade, <laughs> right, 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 right. Like, so learning everything. This was, this was still before Canva, right? right, right. right? <laughs> before <laughs> Canva. This, way, this was 2013. Uh, uh, <laughs> Um, but computers were working, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but uh, I also started getting involved in the local Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I looked around. And I was like, oh, y'all got a lot of influence in Memphis because most of the people in office in Memphis are Democrats. But I saw none, yo, no young people at the table. Mm-hmm. None. Yeah, I remember them days. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm like, it's at the Union Hall. Right. I mean, I understand yeah. the means kind of boring, but, you know. Obviously, these folks had some sort of influence. So I started trying to get involved in like people welcomed me, but they wanted me to work the sign in table. And respectfully, I'm not, I'll work the sign in table. Why? Because you get to meet every person and walk through the door and they got to meet. See, that's, hold on, hold on. Perspective. See, that's, say it again. Yes, perspective. People say it okay, again. Yeah. Most people be like complaining, I got to work the sign in table. You're touching every yeah. person that comes mm-hmm. in. Here. Exactly. That's, Right, come Strategy. on. Strategy. Right, right, right. So, but the art of war, the art of I'm war. doing the sign in table and I want decision making power. Mm-hmm. So, I realized, okay, it's going to be hard getting one of these little seats. So, let me create my own entity. So, I recreated the, the young Democrats in Memphis right. because I knew you couldn't mm-hmm. kick out another Democratic entity. So, let mm-hmm. me do one that's going to align with my passion, young people. Mm-hmm. So, I did, I made it fun. I so, I did, I, I started that. off trying to raise like, a hundred dollars here, like doing a little car wash at uh, AutoZone. And I was like mm-hmm. trying to come up to the meetings and hosting our meetings before the big Democratic Party meetings to encourage young people to stay over. Right. And right. it was working. And so we would like try to do something in line with the parties a lot. And it worked. Um, so we got more and more young people mm-hmm. involved. I had my meetings at bars and restaurants and where, where playing, young people want to be. Where young people yeah, want to be. want to be there too. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Look, look, so, I would show up at the Young Dems meeting. Right. I know that's why he sure did. Right. Because I had to make I'm it sorry. fun. Like, let's be real. Like, it's all about marketing. Don't nobody mm-hmm. want to come sit in no union hall and hear a bunch of folks talking and complaining. Like, right. yeah. let's, let's get some stuff done over a beer or some nachos or whatever Man, that looks what? like. Right. So... I kept engaged with that, started the Memphis chapter, and then I became the president of the state chapter, and I replicated this model across the state of Tennessee in Nashville, okay. Chattanooga, right. Knoxville, okay. and was getting a statewide coalition of young people engaged. And I was branding it. I was making it pop, and I was mm. making it flashy. I was making it like the political organization to be involved. Lamar. I was making it London Lamar, right. was right. it London Lamar, Lamar right. but I was making yeah. it the new generation yeah, of leaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Making it hip, making right. it flash. So that is my strategy mm. coming in in the branding hat because now this is 2014, 15, 16. That stuff is starting to like build up mm. in the world. Yeah. Um, then I ran for office at 23 and I lost. Mm. And I was a little devastated. I don't remember that. I ran for the state executive committee for Senate District 33. Okay, okay, I remember now. In 2014. Yeah, I remember. I was on the ballot and I got whooped by Allison Brownlee. I remember that. Um, I remember. But I stayed involved. And Mm -hmm. uh, that's after that, I started work for Stanford Children, getting involved in education. That's where he met me. Right. And I started uh, working on education policy, start organizing in community and start linking the uh, the connection between people, policy and politics. It was mm-hmm. starting to become real for me mm-hmm. around a certain issue. Mm-hmm. And so now I was developing my professionalism, uh, my knowledge around actual issues that people care about. Because when I first ran for office, I was just running. I'm like, I went to college. I got a degree in political science. I passionate right, right, vote right, for me. Like. Right. 
I, mean, I had to be let my ego and put that to the side and be like, okay, that's not enough. Like, what have you done? Right. And I haven't really done much yet. Right. I mean, I did a little, but nothing to the degree that other folks have. Mm-hmm. So I stayed and worked there for a while, went on to work for a women's reproductive organization, did women's health care mm-hmm. advocacy, did all of that. Um, and by this time, it's four years later. Uh, congruently, I am still traveling the state and the country. I was running for executive vice president of the National Young Democrats uh, organization. I was a vice chair of the Black Caucus then. Like, I'm just really spreading my influence around a nation of young people and the Democratic apparatus. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Now it's coming to 20, uh, 2017. Is I find out that Lee Harris running for county mayor. Mm-hmm. He actually called me. He was like, I want to let you know you, I'm running for county mayor. And I know that there may be some shifts. You need to start looking because I know mm-hmm. you want to run for office. And where was he at, at that time? He was in the state senate. That's right. That's right. Right. That's right. That's right. Shout out to Lee Harris. Done the show last time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Right. Yeah. And then found out. So I was, you know. Uh, putting conversations out there, find out Ramesh was going to run for his seat. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that means the District 91 seat where I live was opening it up. Right. So I said, oh, it's four years Wait. later. I'm about to go. Hold it. So, so listen, did y'all catch the chain reaction of movement, right? Mm-hmm. Lee Harris, one move. Mm-hmm. Lee Harris said he was going to run for county mayor. That set off the reaction for what? Ramesh uh, to move. To where? To the Senate. To Lee Harris's seat, mm-hmm. which opened up what? My ability to get in the state house. Yeah, yeah. Because Ramesh was leaving her state representative seat mm-hmm. to go to run the for state Senate, mm-hmm. which opened up a spot for, so everything touches everything. Y'all mm-hmm. see that? Yeah. The domino effect, right? Mm-hmm. Because Lee Harris said, I'm going to run for mayor. It opened up a whole domino effect. But you know, that, and let's, I just thought about this mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. All of us were young. Yes. Lee, Ramesh, mm-hmm. and me. That's right. That's right. The young folks set an example of how you really do it. Right, right, right. You I know, agree, I, agree. Just, I never hey, thought I'm, about I'm, like I'm that. I'm young folks too. Y'all got me messed up. <laughs> no, Y'all no, me messed up. No, I'm just kidding. 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 I'm right now. I'm unk. I'm oh, unk. Yeah. Right, yeah, but go ahead. Go ahead. So, um, so anyway, um, you know, we made the move. Mm-hmm. I ran, for, uh, decided to run for office. I put, uh, announced on my 27th birthday. Um, and we were off. A month later, I lost my job because of not being able, they didn't want to kind of for me to do both. Mm-hmm. Cool, that's whatever. So I developed a, had a little 401k from Stanford mm-hmm. Children. So I emptied out the little 401k I had, paid my rent up for the next couple of months. Um, my mom and daddy helped pitch in on my bills. And at the time I was dating somebody and he bought my food. That was Whoa. it. We can't go, we can't walk past that. Damn, you just said you food, got to be your food. So he's buying the food. So that tell you at the, the level yeah. of the grind at the bottom. Right, right. I right. wanted this. I gave right. up everything. Right. Roll like, them dice. Like Cash for it all real. In. Like Cash it all in. You know, I just had a moment. God. Yeah, that's why that's why I stopped you. <laughs> like for real. For real, for you real. You know. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So yeah, I just I I became my own campaign manager and I took all the experiences that I talked about from when I graduated college, started at that firm, all the skills, and I came up with my own field plan. I designed my own literature. I made my own website. I came up with my own fundraising. Hello. I did every single thing. Mm-hmm. I taught how I taught myself how to use Photoshop. Yeah. Just because I didn't have a lot of resources. Yeah. You know, so I like had to do it all on my own. And uh-huh. that was a value of being a young person. We yeah. were technologically advanced with these new graphics and branding tools mm-hmm. that we can use. And I, I thought my stuff looked good too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I canvassed every day from about 11, 10, 11 a.m. to 2, 3, 4 o'clock. Break that down every for people. Day. What does that mean to canvas? Canvas means knocking on doors. Right. So because, I mean, I, I feel like getting fired was the thing that made me win. It freed you up. It freed me up. Right. It launched you. It, it launched, launched me. And I was already a runner at the mm-hmm. time. Right. So I was super in shape. Mm-hmm. So I mean. I remember them days. <laughs> right. right. I, used right. To, I used to love Look, running. Me I pull up on, I mean, oh take my, my car to the, to the Mercedes shop on, on Cooper. And who, who running by with the dog? London. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but, but that's important though, you know, and, and so, and, and I want to go back to the fact that you were fired which then freed your time up to canvas, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I always say there's purpose in everything, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When you and Now, I'm sure at the time you were fired, you was like, I don't understand this, mm-hmm. right? What is happening? For two seconds, I was right, like, right, I'm right. free. Right, 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 right. <laughs> 
and, and so you never know what you know what purpose is serving. You think you're going through a heart, right? But there's a purpose in it, right? And if you were not, if, it freed you up to knock on them doors. It freed me up to knock on the doors, and I was consistent about right. it because sometimes. Even if you have the time, if you don't know what to do with that free time, mm -hmm. you will lose it and mm -hmm. abuse it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, was, I wanted this so bad because at this point, I ain't gave up. I ain't lost everything. I'm like, on not on rock bottom, but like, obviously, I'm living real basic at the time. I wouldn't even, I couldn't even go out with my friends in the summer, even though I was off. Like, I was all the way in. Um, mm -hmm. So I knocked on doors every day because that's the most effective way to change a vote. I've mm -hmm. done it for other people's campaigns and mm -hmm. they actually won. Right. So I'm like, you know, if I know this works, then I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I promise you, every person that voted on me, they probably got a door knock. Mm. Promise you. Right. They right. got a door knock. And, and, and to all those people that are watching, that are considering running for office, you're getting a blueprint right here. I'm literally giving away you're free giving advice them, right now. Free shit. Right. Now pay me if I right. I'm just playing. You want me to work for you? I'm just right, 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 right. Park right. Park. Uh, Cause Cause right, right, right. Right. I give it, I give it to you for real. Right, right. right. Um, but no, seriously, I'm just joking. But no, we canvassed, we worked hard, we was out there in that sun, um, and we won. And I walked into the legislature. And hold the that. day hold that. No, 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 no. I'm gonna stop. We, we hold that. Cause we are when we come back, we are going to talk about her entrance to the legislature. Mm. Her, 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 her words before she walked in and the response from the Republicans in Tennessee legislature. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. We'll be right back. Hey, grab a bag with a roll up. Grab your cup and let pull up. They didn't want us round at first, but now they act like they know what. Hey, but they show love. Yeah, we show out when we show up. I don't even do the lip of this. Might make me throw up. But we talked up. This the after party. Shit grabbing on my body. White girl got a bottle in the club. And that going all this. Talked up in a wreck the party. We just brought out everybody. No, we got our I'm CJ Davis, Memphis Chief of Police, and you are watching The Antonio Parkinson Project. You're watching The Antonio Parkinson Project. Welcome back to The Antonio <laughs> Parkinson Project. Project. Uh, the you, Conte, hey, Kojak. No. Conte actually getting a countdown right today. Y'all got her, her birthday. She, 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 she ain't had enough Mountain Dew. That's <laughs> right. what you want. I'm a 50 month. Y'all gonna let it go. I got Hello. Yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. LeConte, shout out to LeConte. Lime green fingernails in the building. Y'all give it up for her. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say yeah. something. Lon uh, London Lamar, before you go into... Do I have to say your whole name? No. Okay, that's, that's what I feel like. Brand, though. I feel like I'm just like... And it, and it flows Lamar. though. That's like I know, a, like, it's like, a, like a superstar it's name. Like yeah. Lamar. That's what I said. It flows. <laughs> it, yeah, it rolls okay. off the tongue. Y'all, right? y'all talking about politics, so I'm all, I'm all. It's, it's your story is deeper than politics. Um, first of all, when you was telling your story and you were just talking about what you saw, um, it is it, that's that's really big into success and how what shapes a child. That, that that's big under what you saw. And then even if even if it's Senate level or legislative, I don't know anything about politics, but your destiny is is uh some other person's destiny is tied to your obedience. Mm. So ooh, ooh. yes. Coach I think she giving that, that PK giving that word, ain't she? It is. So, yeah, I'll look at that part again. Uh, right now, uh, right now, what? Somebody's else's yes. destiny is tied to your obedience. Wow. So, by you not being obedient, it could be holding up somebody else. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's what y'all looking deep. at it like. I don't oh, look, I don't, but I'm that's, that's deep. So, that is. Thanks for obedience. And another thing about you too, you have a good perspective because a lot of things that you said as far as sitting at the desk or things you had to do, a lot of people are entitled and they don't want to work for nothing. Mm. Or it's one thing, they lose a job, they just want to get up, give up. Oh, it's not meant to be. Man, and it's everybody else's fault. Well, yeah, you don't did one thing, it is okay, it's about perspective. Like, yeah. so you 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 understand that you have to serve. People, you have to serve in, in order to lead and everybody don't want to serve first. So that's yeah. that's it, that's important. That's what I want to say before y'all dive into. Yeah. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. I agree. I think it's important to learn how yeah. to follow before you can lead. Yeah. Because yeah. if you follow someone, I think your perspective as a leader, mm -hmm. like you care more about how you make people feel yeah. as they follow you and how they respect you in that process. Mm -hmm. Because if you're leading people and they don't respect you, then you can't lead them to greatness. Mm -hmm. And so I think also leaders got to continue to remain humble. Mm -hmm. um, and continue to remember that people are watching you have to be held to a higher standard and you can't do those things if you've never been in a position to look up to somebody. And of course, you don't know everything. 
I don't care how much leadership potential you have, you still got to learn and grow and watch somebody else in order to get there. And so my mom taught me that Mm -hmm. for sure. And she's really the person that always keeps me humble, makes me think about a little guy, always acts how is your decision going to impact others? And I really appreciate her for always keeping me in check as yeah. I continue to, um, you know, Evolve. get more responsibilities mm-hmm. uh, as a leader. Like right. old people say, make sure you don't smell yourself. Hello. Man. Yeah. 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 You know, smell Hello. Now. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, London Lamar got so many, so many guardians around her. Seriously, real talk. We done been out of town together, you know, in different places. You know, there's been times where we had that. I had mm-hmm. look, got look, mm-hmm. look, right. <laughs> there's been time and and times where she's been it and and this that and other. But she has so many guardians around. I can name them. You know, myself, Jesse Chisholm. You know, uh, all the other, yeah, all, yeah. Dixie. We man, Dixie, Vincent Dixie, and other man. We we. We, I know, like, if somebody really try to come for me, like, I got some men that's go, like, man, they go ride. get on you. We're going to yeah. ride. You know, and ride. I'm so thankful for that. Uh, yeah. Like, I just, you know, I know that, and I'm going to take a moment to address this. I know that right now, um, I've been using my platform to really kind of talk about this, but I feel like black men and women are in a renaissance period with each other. Mm-hmm. And we have, we're at a crossroads of we go continue to fight or we go go all in and love on each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my brother's, Always remind me of how much black men love black women. Mm-hmm. Come on, um, and the reason that's, that's important. <laughs> that's, important. That's, 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 that's important. And yes. I yes. want to make sure I do my part uh, to show my same level of loyalty and love and appreciation to black men, especially now having a black son. Mm-hmm. Um, like I just mm-hmm. definitely want him to grow, like us to grow to know that we got to come back together mm-hmm. as black people and black family love one another. We got to get the black family back together. Me and marry your girl, girls love on them. Like, like, let's create more families, yeah. more babies, like what? all of it. The village, the right, village. like the village got to come back together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And social media has yeah. gotten us it's thinking okay. it's INDA. I'm sick of being independent. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, I want to be a high yeah, boy. Probably be codependent sometimes. Yeah, it's okay. They're having a moment right here. Right now. I mean, right. this. A, but, uh, I mean, I'm yeah, not going to tell you. We are going to win history month, right? Yeah, it's going to let us be great. I'm going to let us be great. Y'all have a moment across yeah, the table, right? Yeah, that's important. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Project, 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 project. Important. But, you know, so London, you know, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I, yeah, I know you know you. Mm-hmm. Know her, know her, right? And and I still, I'm still in awe when I listen to you, right? Mm-hmm. And and real talk, you know, and 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 I would tell her uh, that, you know, you you hadn't, she hadn't even, she hadn't even reached her peak yet, mm-hmm. yeah. And so, you know, I want y'all to think about this, right? You you you're watching this young lady on on Antonio Parkinson Project right now, and she hadn't even reached her peak, mm-hmm. right? This is still in the baby stages of her story. Mm. Yeah, and I want I need y'all, I need people to I seriously, I need people to grasp that, to understand that, right? Because this is a woman who, if she stays on her trajectory, mm-hmm. will be in one of the highest positions that a woman has ever achieved. Oh, real real that. talk. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Now, I've, I've always told her that. I've always told her that, right? And sometimes I have to talk off the ledge, yeah. right? Because she can be ready to smack shit out of a motherfucker. Right? <laughs> right? That's, 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 that's the other side of London, like, and I'm still working on myself. It's okay. Right. Well, I got a temper. You're self-aware. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. important okay. to be self-aware. And if you're self-aware, people can't hold that against you. You ain't going to tell me nothing that I ain't willing to tell on myself. So right. you, take that, you take that weapon for them, so that's important. Absolutely. So. I'm working on my temper. But let me, speaking of temper let me get back to the story uh-uh. so when i first got elected that was in 2018 uh i think trump just got it was it that's was that no no there was a governor's race right. um right after trump billy billy yeah. mm-hmm. um and during that midterm season there was a lot going on where the republican party was really doubling down on racist rhetoric mm-hmm. um to drive the vote Mm-hmm. At that time. Um, and that's where you start seeing it really start to increase in a major way. And of course, Tennessee voted down. White men voted Republican. I, I, like, you know, it is what it is. So one day I was in. The, talk about the period we're in. I don't mean to interrupt you, but, you know, you got some, you know, we're going into the George Floyd stuff, you know, mm-hmm. going into all of this. This turmoil that's mm-hmm. happening in the country. So I just want to set it up for you. Go ahead. Oh, no, I appreciate yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, 
So the day after the general, I'm officially state representative, just got elected. I'm looking at TN, uh CNN Tennessee exit poll data on a computer and I decided to make a Facebook live addressing how Republicans are racist because they voted Republican based on all the rhetoric that was being said and it was very racially charged. Mm. So my whole thing is much of the marketing around that was based on racially charged rhetoric. So of course you would think that you know people who believe in that and vote for that tend to have those beliefs. Now I probably could have said it nicer but Two days later. Well, you got to say what you said. I called Tennessee racist. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just mad. I mean, I mean that's why I said Tennessee is racist. Right. Well, but there's, there's more to the story, right? So, no big deal. Like, everybody called Tennessee racist at the time. So I don't like, <laughs> and I'm community. So I, I literally thought nothing of it. Nothing of it. And I got up on, uh, got up two days later. And next thing I know, the Shelby, somebody sent me a link. The Shelby County Republican Party oh. shared my video um, talking about uh, how dare she say this or something to that nature. Next thing you know, all of these national media outlets start picking up my video. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, okay, like okay. young. Okay, come on, press. So, right. no, for real, but in a scary is right. <laughs> but no such thing as bad press. Exactly. Right. 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 But I've never right. been like right. in the thrust national media, it. like right. thrust into the media like that. So, what comes with the story like that is this nigger, I'm a lynch you, all of these type of go yeah. back to Africa, all these oh, other wow. things. So mm-hmm. I am like not only shocked, but now I'm terrified because I'm getting these death threats from like racists. And how old are you at the time? I'm at 28 years old. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm like young, I'm single, you know, uh, me and my boyfriend just broke up. Like, so I'm kind of, I live by myself. So I'm like, I don't own no gun. I'm like, I don't know if it's real or fake because I've never been attacked like Mm -hmm. that before. So I'm like, okay, I'm dealing with that. Next thing I know, I get a call from one of my Democrat, one of the Democrat legislators saying, you know, the Republicans are so upset at you. They are, uh, some want to call for your resignation. Uh, They want you to resign, all of this other stuff. So they was like, you know, just send out an apology and hopefully it just die down. So I'm like nervous. I'm like, I just got elected. And then I'm also haven't frustrated. haven't even been sworn in yet. haven't even been sworn in yet. <laughs> right. And then I ain't going to front you. I'm also frustrated because it's radio silence from people in Memphis. Mm-hmm. Like people in the activist community right. who's supposed yeah. to be out here pushing it. They ain't nobody. None of them coming to my aid. Right. Or and they ain't saying nothing. I'm just out here by myself taking all of this heat. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm just like, okay, well, I just sent them an apology. Like, you know I don't mean that you racist. I don't want to talk about you specifically. <laughs> but okay. Chill out. Chill out. Like, chill out. Like, chill out. I apologize. Big right. deal. Like, because right. I didn't understand. Like, right. what was you so mad about right. as if, like, racism right. doesn't exist? Like, that's to me. I still like, don't. Are you racist? Dang. Right. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Like, you know, I still don't understand. But whatever. Yeah. You know, I come into the legislature. I apologize. And you know, I'm bubbly. So I come in and I'm like, hey, everybody, because a third of the legis- the house at the time is new. So it's like right. 30 freshmen coming right. in with right. me. So I'm going to them like, hey, how you doing? I'm all excited or whatever. And they just like, uh, just giving me the, oh, just the that's, driest. That's that girl, that's her. That's her. You that's that's girl. her girl. That's the one they was talking about. Right. 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 So I'm like, okay, no big deal. So I, I move on to my, you know, into my role. I have my little um, welcoming party. I'm excited. I'm here. I'm drafting my first legislation. So when I got elected, the Centoya Brown story was hot in the media. Um, Just break it down. So the Centoya story was, was this young girl who was serving time in prison for murder for pretty much killing the guy that's raping her. She was sold to. Um, she was being controlled by a pimp. Right. And so at that time, I was really impacted by her story because as a young woman who is being sold, I felt like, why sh- the system, this is an injustice in the system. This mm-hmm. must be fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, of course, I'm like, I'm in the legislature now, so I can- I'm going to fix it. I got this. <laughs> right. I got this. So my first bill, and I was just telling this story. I was teaching a training earlier, and I was just telling them this story, how to craft the legislation where um, if you're a victim of human trafficking um, and you are being trafficked, you got the right to kill your perpetrator. So off top, it seemed like, duh, like you're getting raped by somebody who bought you. Like, don't you have a right to like kill them? Kind of, you know, like they're raping you. But it was seriously flawed. So 
I presented my first building's uh, subcommittee at the House Judiciary, and it gets voted down. Y'all walk out the committee room crying. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> my first, first bill. bill. I'm like, I'm, I'm they like, they give you your first bill. You just give me your right, first right, bill, right, right. and I'm like. Like, I've been in the media for, like, all of this work I'm trying to do around there. So, like, people watch it, and it, like, gets voted down. And I, like, go outside and start crying. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. But um, nevertheless, I don't give up. I decide to say, okay, I'm starting to watch how things are moving. So all of my bills are getting killed. All of them getting killed. But in the process, I'm noticing that. I'm noticing the clicks and the relationships and fractions. everything, the fractions. Right, right. But I, so I'm realizing that bills are being passed not on their content, but if they like you or not. Hey. And then a little bit of the content. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you all right? You made me spit you all right? my ice out. Because that's so, people don't realize it's like a high school popularity in, the, in the capital. Yes, the popularity, popularity contest. Who they like mm. matters. Mm-hmm. Am I lying? Mm-mm. But but go ahead, Lana. I didn't mean to interrupt. So I'm I take it upon myself to try to build one on one relationships with my Republican colleagues in the house because I'm realizing they really think I think they are racist. Mm. So I start, you know, go go out to the receptions with them, talk to them, get to know them, sit down with them, like me, introduce myself to their wives, like. Get them to see that, okay, I may have said that, but I'm not a bad person. And a lot of them warm up to me. They start to like me. Um, so one day I was pushing a bill. It was like so simple. It's like, how could you not vote for it? And one who I start to build a relationship pulled me to the side and said, I'm just going to give you the truth. You being blacklisted. You're not passing a bill this semester because of your right. comments and people are still mad about it. Oh, Lord. I said, oh, oh okay. Oh, it's a, I was like, okay, okay. And I was like, you know what? Thank you. And I didn't make a big deal about it. I never, you know, I didn't go to do no media thing about it. Like, big, whatever. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. So I said, you know what? That's cool. I'm a double down. I decided to take to double down on my efforts to get to know everybody um, and work on me and just build the relationship because I'm seeing that it's starting to work. Like they, they're saying like the fact that he decided to let me know what was up, let me know that yeah. there are people there who are starting to warm up to me. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause he didn't have to tell he you. He didn't have, right. He didn't yeah, have to right. tell, he didn't have mm-hmm. to say, and then I had some coming to me saying, you're building a lot of flies cause you're working with honey instead of vinegar. So they say, you know, the phrase mm-hmm. you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Mm-hmm. Um, so I said, okay, I listened. I said, I'll go and take their advice. I'll go ahead. Even though I feel like I was justified, I'll take my ego out of it. Now, that freshman year, while I'm going through all that, I end up getting pregnant my freshman mm-hmm. year and in the legislature. So I'm like, I'm already getting dragged and having a hard time. Mm-hmm. Now I got this baby on the way. Mm-hmm. So now I'm worried about that. And at the time, the, the father was like doing me real dirty, like mm-hmm. just real dirty. And so I got all of these stresses going on and I'm finished my legislative career, not really passing a bill. So I'm just like going through it. Um, so now my psyche is off because mm. my my view of the world and how things are supposed to operate are not aligning with my moral values. Wait a minute, from, from what? From the relationship failing, from the pregnancy, what from what? So, <clears throat> so not being able to come into the legislature and get things done based on a comment that I felt like I had the right mm-hmm. to say. Um, being the only one not really feeling like I just belong. Mm -hmm. Just like, I don't belong. Ostracized. Ostracized. Mm -hmm. Um, And then having taken upon myself to have to apologize. And Mm -hmm. I did it, but that don't mean it felt Mm -hmm. good in the process. I do want to acknowledge that even though I did it, sometimes doing the thing you must do don't always feel good. Mm -hmm. Um, And then having this situation on the outside of like also being ridiculed, that relationship has now become toxic. And the judgment I know I'm getting, like, believe it or not, people in Memphis are still very concerned. Conservative. Mm-hmm. So I'm a young, bill, unmarried mm-hmm. woman walking around with an illegitimate baby. Mm-hmm. So I knew I was like, now, like, was that coming from though? Um, not, the, not, not names, but just women, the men, women, or more so women than mm-hmm. men. Um, but uh, the comments and the attitudes and the the looks and what others had told others that come back and tell me mm-hmm. what they said. Um, mm-hmm. So. I was just recognized like the it wasn't a good look. Wait a minute. We're gonna pause right there. 
I gotta leave them on the cliffhanger. No, right? no because, story. How are you gonna stop? I'm we're gonna come, when we come back, we're gonna talk about the mental health aspect mm-hmm. of all of that weight on the shoulders of a 28 year old at the time. So you're watching Antonio Parkins Project. We'll be right back. This is Memphis Mayor Paul Young, and you are watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Project, 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 project. Now, welcome back to the Antonio okay. Parkinson Project. I am Antonio Parkinson. <laughs> We're here with my lovely, lovely co-host Angelica Jelly Woods on the Mountain Dew. Yeah. 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 I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. They talking about me all the time. This we tied. Thank uh, you. Hey, hey, DJ Kojak, she is so quick with it. Yeah. I can't catch her, man. I, I stay look, on my look, feet. Look, she on I the mountain on do, feet. right? She's like, having a baby. That's why my eyes look <laughs> like this. I'm right, right, right. black and knees. I got tight eyes anyway. Right, so. black and knees <laughs> and Iowan, mm-hmm. corn huskers, yeah. and all, all kind that. of. Oh, that's Nebraska. I'm sorry. Same thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Same thing. <laughs> three, three black people lived in Iowa. Angelica yeah. and her twin were two. Yeah. Yep. Right, right, right. <laughs> London Lamar in the building. What's up? Hey. Hey. London Lamar. London, London, London Lamar. Mm. So, so we left off. I wanted to I wanted to come back and talk about so much weight on your shoulders at this age. You're probably 29 at this point, right? You make 29. Is it this 2019? Yes, I'm 20. No, I'm 28, 28 going 28, on 29. Going on 29. Under 30 now, you know, and, and so you got wow. you're dealing with a bad relationship, pregnant, you know, the the led come first. First, you know, seconds in the Tennessee legislature, they're coming at you because you said some were racist. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a lot of weight. You're in the public eye, national news. I remember these stories. They went, it went national. I remember this. I remember too. Right. And and so you got a lot and, and you feel like you're alone. How did, tell us about the mental health aspect of that. It was awful because like, a lot of my friends were still young, so I was mm-hmm. talking to, so they didn't understand the capacity of my responsibility because they weren't in the public eye. They can just be like, oh, sis, I'm here for you if you need help babysitter or whatever. There's like, no and, they meant, and they meant it so much that they were serious about it, too. But no um, idea. But no idea. Um, and I'm broke, too. Like, I don't have a job. Like, I'm right. living off a basic salary, too. Right. So I ain't yeah. got no money, either. Right. And I got a, a muff. You can say it. You are, you are Antonio Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you I got this <laughs> over here. We need that beat back. We need that beat back. We need some gunshots. Boom, 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 The shot's about to be fired. Right, like, right, we, right. Here, we at this part of the show. Uh-huh. Shot's fired. But no. <laughs> um, At the time, you know, like, I got this who just... Just when I say mean to me, like just mean and and their family just mean to me. Mm-hmm. And um, there was they were spreading rumors about me that were not true. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was frustrated because I really didn't have no outlet to defend myself. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it's you know, I couldn't really do nothing about it. So I kind of felt helpless. And on the flip side, I'm trying to like prepare to be a mom. So like I'm stressed out as hell. I'm depressed. When I say depressed, I am depressed. Like that summer, I didn't. I was trying to keep up, go to all the young people mm-hmm. conferences, but I kind of was like, felt like I was walking that thing with a sh- scarlet A because I was a new legislator trying to be engaged and I got this big old belly walking around and I'm trying to own it and be proud of it. But deep down inside, I feel the shame and the stares mm-hmm. and the like the, you know, looking at me. But, I, you know, I, mm-hmm. I decided to keep it. So I was like, I'm going to do this mama thing. So I'm trying to own it, but yeah. that don't mean it don't hurt. Yeah. So I'm stressed out. And so one day, um, like towards 32 weeks, my feet are starting to swell. I thought mm. it was part of pregnancy. They just starting to get big and big and big and big. And I'm still traveling back and forth from Nashville. Um, so I had a summer study around week 
31. Explain that um, so people know. You know so a summer study is. is a hearing on legislation during the summer mm-hmm. and the off season to go more in depth about what the things are and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. So um, when Republicans started to like me a little bit, they start instead of killing my bills, they summer study them, which means it's saying I don't disagree with you, but I'm not voting for it. Yeah. Right. So right. that gives them cover. That right. gives them cover, but it's also a sign that they don't all uh, they don't necessarily all the way disagree with you. It's not as bad as a, a no. Okay. You just gotta come do work in the summer. And I'm gonna always do the work to get my bills passed. But anyway, so I'm coming back to Memphis and the next day uh, I woke up for my 32 week doctor's appointment and I'm feeling uh, sick that morning. So I get up, I tell my mom, I'm like, you know, I don't really feel so well or whatever. And the next thing you know, I had the most excruciating pain ever, like sharp pains. Like I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to labor. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Like, and next thing you know, within 15 minutes, they are unbearable type pains um, mm. where like some like feels like somebody stabbing me in the stomach with a knife. Mm. Um, and so now my mom and my grandma is freaked out. So they put me in a car and they're rushing mm. me to the hospital. Mm. And I'm like screaming because the pains are getting worse mm. and worse and worse and worse. And so now I'm scared because I'm thinking like I'm either in labor or something's happening to the baby. And so I get to the emergency room and I'm screaming. Like the loudest scream. And so they don't even check me and they immediately take me back. And I'm telling them like something's wrong with my stomach. So that she mm-hmm. puts a thing on there. She's like, I don't get a heartbeat. I don't hear a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. And so they put me on a stretcher and they rushed mm-hmm. me to the other side of Memphis, Germantown, to the labor and delivery. Um, and the saddest part about mm-hmm. that rush was my grandmother, who's older, trying to keep up with their stretcher running mm-hmm. through that hospital. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So um, I get mm-hmm. into the room um, and now it's like six doctors and nurses all standing over me, like taking my clothes off ripping and he has his thing over me like I don't hear a heartbeat heartbeat one sticking their finger up he's pulling his finger out it's blood coming out like mm-hmm. and the, my blood pressure is like 210 over 120 at this point mm-hmm. so I hear him the lady go ahead and tell me the baby's gone mm-hmm. and we got to put you out before you stroke out mm-hmm. um and so um they the I heard this Chinese doctor. He was like, "Are you gonna have to push this baby out?" And I grabbed his shirt. I said, "Are you fucking crazy?" And literally just like that. And he and then the other doctor's like, "No, no, no. We got to go into emergency surgery." So I had to sign a consent form. Mm. And once I got done signing a consent form, like they put the medicine in me, I was out. Mm. And I woke up and I was in the hospital room. My son was dead in the crib next to me. Oh my God. And the 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 tears and the worry on my mama's face before I knocked out and my grandmother's face is like witness them saying that if they don't put me out, I'm almost dying. And their grandbaby just died in my stomach was one of the most, still to this day, the most traumatic experience I've ever had in my life. Oh my and so now I wake up and um I'm realizing like I had lost my child mm. um, and I got these breathing machines on me. Like I got all of this <clears> stuff, <throat> these things on my legs. Like I'm hooked up. They got me in labor. I see you type situation. Um, and so I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm coming to the reality of um, that my son is gone. And I'm like destroyed because regardless of how stressful it is, I still wanted that child. I like, I didn't had a baby shower. I didn't done all of those things. It's just, it's a lot. And uh, so I called my mama. I told my mama, I was like, you know, go ahead and call the dude and tell him what happened. And I said, please tell him not to tell nobody what happened. Cause I need a moment to get myself together. And, um, you know, my family's there. You know, we call my mom, my daddy, my sister. My sister's about to fly to Memphis. And, um, and then the father comes. Um, baby looks just like his bitch ass. Yes. Um, but his ass told people. Mm. And the next thing I know, my phone is blowing up. Now, I'm just like a few hours out of waking up. Like, it, I'm still processing that I just lost my baby and I just I had a near their experience. And now everybody calling me and texting me and mm. all of these things. And I'm just now got to call my friend. I'm like, girl, can you come up with a public statement about what just happened? So now I'm sitting in the bed, just lose my baby. Now I got to come up with a PR plan. How are you mentally? How are you I, mentally? In that moment, I was in shock. Like I wasn't anything. I was right. sad no. and I was crying, no. but I was numb because right. I had all of these things. So now in that moment, I'm dealing with the loss. 
I'm coming up with a PR plan, and I got to plan the funeral. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. So, you know, the Ford, shout out to Air Force Senior. Mm-hmm. Very clear. Shout out to uh, the Ford. Mm-hmm. Senior. Senior. Uh, his wife. They uh called me. It's like, we got the body. We go come. Just let me know when you're ready to us to come mm-hmm. get it. So I stayed. I let the baby stay in the room for me for two days. You, you you came. You, mm-hmm. Karen, and Jesse came up to the hospital mm-hmm. to see me. There. Yep. And I appreciate that. When yeah. I say bedside to the bedside, baby. head, like, in that thing, just sick. Mm. Um, mm. I get out the hospital four or five days later. Um, I go home and recover for a week, and then I have to have a funeral. And I'm like, I'm 28 years old, and I'm sitting here. And just been elected. It, it, going through everything mm. I want, and now right. I'm burying a baby right. at mm. Memorial mm. Park Cemetery. Mm. And I barely had the money. I had just enough. To pay for that funeral. That's mm-hmm. all I like yeah. emptied out my whole account. Yeah. And thankfully, my Republican colleagues end up donating to me. They did. They did. Yeah, they raised that. me some money. Mm-hmm. And so when when I had to empty out my accounts, I was then able to recover, have a little recovery so mm-hmm. I could take off for the next couple of weeks. So shout out to them who yeah. donated. I love you for that. Regardless if you don't agree with the stuff I say all the time, but I ain't forgot that. And um now I'm just real fucked up. <laughs> like, I'm just like, man. man, like I look up like 2019 was like that that mm-hmm. was the start of just really a real depressive time for me. Um I remember and I too will say I still don't still don't think I've recovered all the way from mm-hmm. that level of depression. Mm-hmm. But um I remember the I pushed side through talks, the but it was conversation the, the, at home. Yeah, man, like man. it that just wasn't a loss for me. Yeah. That was a loss for my family, my mom and my grandma, oh, who oh, almost man. watched yeah, me die. Think about that. And yeah, like yeah. after that, my grandma got severely sick and mm. went to the hospital. She was so hurt, it almost killed her. Mm. Mm. Um mm. so she went into the hospital for a couple of weeks and I would and I was so angry at everybody who showed me shade or was mean to me during that time. When I say like even to this day, I confidently say I hate them. Yeah, I like hate you. Yeah, for oh, no, anybody. No, you was angry at the people that even loved you. Now you was just. I was angry. now. Yeah, I was angry so for we, a while. We had to. We had to just take it. Yeah. Seriously. Because I was. I was. I was mad at God. Yeah. Like I was like, why you? Why you embarrass me like that? Because I didn't only just take this loss, but I took the loss in front of everybody, the whole world. Everybody knew I was having a baby publicly. Publicly. Man, and so that? I was just like really at rock bottom. Like I was just like going through it. And, you know, I didn't know like how to navigate. And so really the legislature was my only thing to to look forward to. It was my only outlet. I was like, damn, I just lost my baby. I can't lose my position too. So I kind of came back in 2020 just ready to like give it all because I'm like, I ain't got nothing else to, right. that I cared about. Cause mm-hmm. like you took the thing that I was supposed to be most excited about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it also, unfortunately, like it gave me a reset with a lot of my Republican colleagues. Cause I think a lot of them felt bad for how mean yeah. they were to me. Yeah. And then to turn around and see me have right. to go through that. And they know they was being judgmental and mean to me. They gave me like a fresh start when I came back. And I hate that it took a, a loss like that for them to see the humanity in me, mm-hmm. yeah. but whatever, I take it. Yeah, and I did and I came back and then like I was already an advocate for maternal health but like it took my advocacy to a whole new level hold up hold up hold up, hold up partner hold up partner <laughs> cause look we used to we would be at, at, at my at my pool having these conversations right mm-hmm. and, and you know and, and in that time you gotta understand y'all I don't know if, I don't I, and I hope our listening audience and watching audience understands this gets this that mental health load that she just described, most people would not survive it. Exactly. Most people would have been institutionalized, put in straight jackets, seriously, because that was a heavy, heavy load. But, but And I feel sorry for the people who had to watch me go through that, like oh, you and my man. colleagues, yeah. because they loved me enough, they took the anger. Oh, oh we, and you we, know. And we got bit. Yeah. You don't understand. We important. would get bit by mm-hmm. London. Mm-hmm. Right? Important. We'd be like, and they knew I was going through right, it. Right, they right, knew it. Right, and right, they didn't right, take it personal. Yeah, and I thanked them so all. much. Not at all. Um, not because at all. I was hurting. And I yes. didn't, like, I didn't even have no outlet. And I even tried therapy. And I didn't like it. I don't think it worked for me. Um, to, to be honest, at that time, therapy made me more sad. Mm-hmm. And I ain't saying therapy don't work. I do not endorse therapy yeah, works for, that, yeah. for everybody. Yeah. At that time, for me, I wasn't ready to receive it. Because yeah. I was still, like. I wanted to be mad. I was still I, bleeding. I right. 
So we ain't stopped the, the bleeding yet to see what type of wound we had. Right. And so that's why I was at a at a at a really tough crossroads. And um, but like I didn't shy away from my story. I was like, y'all already know shit. Let me go ahead and like. So I really started going in on women's health policy. Yeah, like right, I was right. like, you saw me almost die. How you go deny me yeah. the right to push policy that's gonna help women live? Mm -hmm. Like you all saw it in front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. This is real for everybody in the legislature mm -hmm. and for me too. And I think my loss, what it did, it actually gave me purpose in my role. Mm -hmm. Like I did, I had a degree in political science. I knew I had these skills. I was a great leader professional. But what really connected me to the work in a real way. Hold that thought. We're going to come right back and we're going to talk <laughs> about, we, we remember, we always said there's purpose in everything, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to understand why she went through what she went through mm -hmm. and what it, what fruit it is yielding at this point. You're watching Antonio Parkinson Project. We'll be right back. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Powered by Black Market Strategies.